Hello there. Um, we're going to create this sort of an image. Uh, this is just a, a mix of two different images. There's um, the model in uh, the foreground and there's this image from which is the background, which is this image. Um, and we're going to cut this and add it onto this image, but make it appear seamless. Um, one of the things that people struggle with when they're um, cutting and pasting people or images or whatever from different from different images with different lighting conditions and then pasting it into another um, image and trying to make it look like it belonged there in the first place, they struggle with um, making it all appear as seamless as possible. Um, usually cut and paste jobs are, you know, you, you can spot them from a mile away and look, what I've done either isn't perfect, but it's good enough for a lot of applications. But um, there's certain things that you're just going to struggle to ultimately fix. There's some things that are uh, unfixable, uh, or they would require a, a lot of time to fix. For example, if if the lighting conditions is substantially different, if you have something like a spotlight, and then in the other image it's more of a diffuse lighting condition, then you're going to struggle. Uh, same as if the uh, lighting comes from above or from below and then it's from the side on the other one. If it's from one side and one and then the other side on the other, you can usually flip the image to, to make it accommodate and make it look like it belongs there. But nonetheless, there are some interesting things that are different about this image and this image. Firstly, pardon me, this one. Firstly, this image has um, a lot of diffuse lighting, a lot of color to it. This one has a very has a, has a one-sided uh, lighting that comes from the left-hand side, and a very yellowy tinge to the whole image. A very antique kind of looking image. So what we're going to do is first is we're going to cut, and I've used the lasso tool to kind of cut around with a bit of with a slight amount of feathering, and um, and I've cre and I've already kind of cut that out. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of of that cut and paste job. So you can see it was a very big image. Um, this was um, let me just resize this. Um, I'm gonna rotate first. I'm gonna get the rotation right and then I'm gonna resize um, the image. All right. Now, when you make things smaller, it does tend to blur. It's something you got to watch out for. Um, now, the background image, if I zoom in, you can see that's very. It's got a bit of sharpness to it, whereas that's kind of lacking a little bit. We'll fix that later on. Um, there's a lot of things we actually need to fix up. Uh, let's place the model around there. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna the the the, the problem with uh, resizing a lot. So I'm undoing because I don't want to resize many times. So the problem with resizing a lot, you tend to lose a lot of quality because every time it resizes, it um. It, it applies a bit of an aliasing effect, which add, which is basically a blur, uh, and we don't want to blur it too much. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Um, it's probably it's probably about okay. Um, that left foot's a bit big, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the uh, shrink tool. There's a shrink tool. Over here you can see Warp Transform, Warp Transform, Choose Shrink, and it's going to shrink that foot size because it was closer to the camera. Alright, that's shrunk, and I'll also select Move from the Warp Transform options, and I'm just going to make sure it's not. Okay, I'm going to move this aside here. There's a few things that are glaring right now. 
Firstly, it's way too bright. That's the first thing I'm going to address. I'm going to re uh, reduce the brightness. So to do that, um, there's a um, there's a function called under colors is where you kind of adjust all your brightness and color settings. So always look for if the if anything's wrong with any color, if it's too bright or if whatever, it's always under the um, color menu. And under the color menu there is an option to select um, brightness and contrast. Now, you're not going to see this on your screen, but I want you to um, just adjust the brightness down just enough until it seems um, well enough. I'm going to adjust the um, contrast as well. I don't want the dark spots to be too dark. But okay, I, I, I brought down the brightness all the way down. Um, so if you go to colors, brightness, bring brightness all the way down. And then that starts to look a little bit more kind of um, in line with the rest of the image. There's another thing that's wrong with this, um, and that is the color. Everything else has a very antique look, and that's what we're going to do now. So I don't want to... Um, I don't want to kind of mess with this particular image too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate layer. After creating a duplicate layer, uh, I will only work on the top layer and then I will um, make it a bit transparent to bring out some of the colors behind. You'll see what I mean. Let's, let's do this. So I'm going to go to colors and I'm going to say, you're, again, you're not going to see this, but under levels, Excuse me, that was the wrong one. Colors, uh, colorize. Colorize, if you can see, it will give you the ability to um, change the hue of the image into virtually any kind of color. And what you want to choose is a color that is consistent with the um, rest of the image. So it's, I believe it's around there, but it's, it needs to be a lot less saturated. So bring down the saturation toggle all the way down as well and that starts to look a bit better. I'm going to tweak that um, hue a little bit more to find the little happy place that, that works for the image. It's going to be around there. I'm not going to spend too much time and bore you all on that but it's, it's going to be around there. Now, obviously, I've t removed the entire color from the image. That's not what we want. So to bring back the uh, some of the natural color that was present in the image originally, what we want to do is um, put reduce the opacity on the top layer, because remember we duplicated the layer. We've got two, and that was the point of doing this. But I can bring it down a little bit now, a little bit more than halfway. And you can see I've got the original color as well as as well as the uh, yellowy tinge that is present in the entire image. Okay. Once you're happy with that, you can actually merge them back down. Um, you know, you don't have to, but you can. Or uh, so I'll, I'll probably do that for the purposes of this tutorial. I'll create a shadow layer now. Okay. So I'm going to say new layer, um, make it transparent, put it in between your image, your model and or your foreground image and your background image. So it sits in the middle because the shadow is going to separate the model and the background image. Okay. So on this layer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a, a brush. that, and I'm going to choose pure black as the foreground color. I'm going to choose a soft brush. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of uh, aspect ratio. Move the aspect ratio just enough so that the angle of the brush, if you can see, is consistent with the ground. Okay, you see that? Uh, I could go up maybe a little bit higher and maybe that's reasonably consistent. So I'll probably go with that. I'd, 
ideally I'd like to go somewhere in between those two. Um, but let's paint the shadows. Now, again, I'm going to do this, but we can re remember we can reduce the opacity at any time. So I'm just adding a little bit of just painting some shadow here and here and here. Now I'm, I'm also bearing in mind, according to the TV and the shadow that it is casting on the right and the lighting here, that the lighting comes from the left hand side. So I'm applying shadows to the right. And hence you can see the arm, I've casted a shadow that goes across. That's from the arm. We go down across. This is, this is a really good way to learn it, to work it with shadows because uh, shadows are very important to make a copy paste image look realistic. Now, this boat here will cast a horizontal shadow going to the right. So again, use your imagination and just draw that. It doesn't, it looks very bad because it's pure black, but remember we're going to add transparency and it's going to look entirely different once we start doing that. Now, um, remember the uh, model here is also casting a shadow on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to put opacity halfway so it's not as dark. Okay. That'll do. Okay, I'm, I'm content with that. Now, if we um, reduce the opacity of that. See, this is how it was before. And look how much better it looks once we start bringing the shadow in. We don't want too much. We definitely do not want too much. Okay. And what I sometimes do as well is I add a, an e even another layer of shadow. So I say a new layer and I kind of darken some points up even further okay 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 so that's starting to look a little bit realistic now um, I'm going to reduce the uh, opacity of that shadow as well because I don't want pure blacks to be coming through. Okay, now this is where now you start doing some final touches. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm just going to show you a demonstration of what's supposed to be done and you can kind of take, take time doing it. But use, use the burn and dodge tool and uh, you burn shadows into place. And the best way to make half decent looking shadows is to burn the highlights. For example, I'm going to burn the high. I'm going to go back to a, a round brush, so I'm going to remove the aspect ratio. But if you choose the original layer or with the model, you can then start to burn. Now I'm just going to click over this a number of times, and you will see that the right hand side is beginning to darken up. Now the Actually, it wasn't much because of the opacity it was all the way down. I'm going to put the opacity all the way up. Now, see how that starts to instantly kind of go a lot darker. Okay. Same as here. The the remember that that hand was casting a bit of a shadow, so you want to kind of darken that up around there. Um. Same with, you know, elements here that are not going to get as much light over here. Um, some of the hair on the, on the right here. Okay, this side of the head, most definitely. Um, the left side of the head will be brighter. Okay. Uh, this side of the arm. Uh, just those little things. I'm not going to spend again. I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because because I'm just illustrating the idea. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some brightness on the other side. So it's the opposite of what we're doing. We added the shadows. 
now we add some brightness and the way we add brightness is uh, I normally like to pick to dodge dodge the mid tones so have a look how this works okay now the shoulder will probably be a little bit bright there with the reflection of the light so that's it now you're getting some bit of 3d element going there see uh, I'm gonna the hair um, if you want a more bright kind of a way of doing this, um, you can dodge the highlights. Have a look at the difference. And it adds, adds some color as well when you dodge highlights. Okay. And I'm not going to spend too much more time on that, but you can see a few things that I've done. Um, I'm going to reduce. You can see I I actually overdid the brightness on on the model there. Um, it didn't need to be that bright there. I think it looked probably a little bit more realistic. Well, that's for you to judge, but it probably probably brightened it up a little bit too much there. Um, so I can either undo that or I can. Uh, burn some of those highlights but you see how it, it didn't really t take me that long at all to establish um, an image that is somewhat consistent I mean this is the original image and this is what it's kind of turned out to be in my and this was a very quick demonstration if you want to be a little bit more careful with it um, you can end up with something a little bit more like this now what I did with this uh, in the end was um, uh, do a new from visible because once you've established the basis of the image you can then change the brightness of it so under colors if you choose levels you can kind of alter the entire brightness of the whole image and because it's because you've already got the coloring right making the whole brightness brighter um, keeps it still consistent so even though we've kind of done some changes it's still consistent um, the whole image is brighter and it, and it kind of looks okay um, like I say, this was my uh, my earlier take. It's every time you do it, it's always going to be different, and um, I kind of rushed this one. But I hope you learned a thing or two out of it. Lighting is ever so important, and I um, if you're ever going to cut and paste images and you want them to look half real, focus on the lighting, focus on the color, focus on the intensity, and particularly the um, if something's diffuse, keep it diffuse. If something's got a spotlight, keep it the same. And this one had an antique look, a rather warm image, and we used those warm colors on the model. Um, thanks for watching. Any questions, please do let me know. Thank you.